Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Pastiche of Skin. Today we're talking about a new release, a thing that's just been announced by PlayStation. They sent out an email this morning. They are going to be joining the likes of Nintendo uh, with their their own version of the NES Classic, Super Nintendo Classic, by releasing the PlayStation Classic. So the PS1 is now going to be a retro console for the pleasure and enjoyment of all people. Uh, so essentially it's going to be a PlayStation with preloaded 20, 30 games and a much smaller body size. So it'll be sitting on your shelf with 20 games built into it. Mostly going to be uh, recognized classics. Uh, things like the Tekken 3, Final Fantasy 7, Wild Arms, um, Jumping Flash. <laughs> one, of the, like, one of the first games I ever actually played on the PlayStation. It's a bit of a... Um, it's a bit of a... Personally, I think it's a bit of a waste of time to actually be making something like this. But obviously there's a lot of money to be made in uh, monetizing nostalgia for some classic games. There's some games that actually have um, been announced that I'm really excited for. R4 is one of my favorite racing games of all time. Uh, Ridge Racer, I always loved. Type 4 was one that I was super entertained by. But we were left with a situation where, where what other games are we going to see on this console? Is it going to actually be um, anything of real import? Is, are, are they going to massively overproduce these and then we're going to be left in a situation where there's plenty of surplus ones? It's um. I can't say I am excited to see Sony going down this route with a, a, a retro console release, considering the fact that they already do have a very, very prolifically expansive uh, library of games available to them on the PlayStation Network as it is. It feels a bit stupid. I mean, obviously, if they, what if I have an idea, if they had taken this and actually decided, right, why don't we just make a network console? That has games on it and then we can just let people download more of them and then give people access to the plentiful library of games that they already have on the PSN network. That would actually encourage people onto the PSN and encourage them to be given out PlayStation Classic of a membership. They would be able to actually you know, like sell these on to people perpetually rather than just making a profit off of a single game or a single console. And they're going to have to be paying licenses left, right and center for like things from Bandai Namco, Square Enix. You know, Nintendo pretty much owned all the like they they kind of like they're able to say like this is our library so we can actually release it. Um, feels like a waste. I mean, uh, the, they've announced five games. Uh, they're chatting about Tekken Three, Wild Arms, Final Fantasy Seven, Ridge Racer Type Four, and Jumping Flash. That was the five out of the twenty they've announced. Now, I personally would love to see a lot more and a lot more buried set of games available on the console. So I just did a quick look, I jumped onto the actual PSN store, uh, got it around. To be honest, the collection of games available on American, Hong Kong, Japanese, and um, European servers are quite widespread. But um, I found some of the, the some of the bigger ones that I was interested in being available on the PlayStation Hong Kong store. So what what proceeds is like a list of like ten games that I'd be really interested in seeing on this console. Now, admittedly, very unlikely that they're going to do these games because uh, some of them are just on the edge of going like, mm, do you remember this game? But obviously with a game like Jack Jumping Flash, do you, how many people I remember playing that? Because it was like a, an actual like launch day title that was translated from a Japanese game that got a sequel that nobody cared about. But um, let's take a look at the list. So uh, in my personal basket, because I went through here and just added the maximum limit of what you can have uh, in your basket in a single transaction. So. This is actually just my, my quick glance kind of selection. Parasite Eve 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 1. I love the Parasite Eve games. Um, the, essentially, a, a RPG Dino Crisis slash Resident Evil style game where it was like turn-based combat, but very, very different style of turn-based combat. Uh, it, it literally played like a Resident Evil game. But then you actually had a pop-up menu and took turns to had attack with special skills and guns and anything else. Never finished Power City 2, but I finished and played through Power City 1 a number of times to the point where, um, yeah, I, I think maybe, I, I think it may, maybe one of those like hidden classics that I actually own a copy of and going, does anybody else remember this? Because I thought it was awesome. How many other people played it? Chrono Cross, a signal to Chrono Trigger. Well, sequel of sorts, but uh, a Square Enix game that actually I've never got to play myself but heard good things about in the past, and it, it, it's Chrono, you know? Essentially, it's, it's a, a game, one of the best games of all time, Chrono Trigger. 
continued on in its own way. So uh, if that was if this was a sequel to the series, they might like Final Fantasy three is a sequel to Final Fantasy two. You know, I would love to get the chance to play this finally. This is one of those ones that just passed me by at the time. Xeno Gears, a Square Enix mech combat RPG that I remember getting copies of back in the day. Pretty sure probably a pirate copy as well because I don't think I ever actually bought it. I think, but never ever got the finish never really got into uh apparently part of the xenoblade chronicles and xeno saga kind of direction of games so i would love to go back to the beginnings and give this a try had very interesting anime cutscenes. of course had the giant robots and um a world crossing battle that actually left this young man that's on the cover scarred and uh working his way towards defeating god you know typical japanese rpg stuff uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3, now this is actually a PSP version of the game, but Street Fighter Alpha 3 is one of the best fighting games that ever got released on the original console. Um, a massively detailed, overly, um, uh, a, ma a massively detailed port of the R Alpha 3 arcade game with a lot of stuff added in. From an era of uh, Capcom games where they threw everything and the kitchen sink into its modes, uh, specifically with uh, Alpha 3 on the PSP, it's, it's got extra characters. But the PlayStation version was still a solid game as well, and is also available as a PS1 classic. I just happened to grab this one because I'm going to buy that for myself. Uh, Ape Escape. Why no Ape Escape? Why no announcement of Ape Escape? Uh, possibly, are we going to have... If the, Ape Escape's such a huge, kind of family-friendly game that was a, a fairly big deal whenever it first came out on the PlayStation. Its absence makes me concerned about Konami's absence from the actual console, and we'll get into that in just a second in a couple of horror games. But uh, I escape essentially uh, chase down the apes. Uh, one of the one of the reasons why I think this is actually not being done is because of the choice that they're making in doing the console with the non-analog pads, because these are the old school pads, no analog controls. So where are they going to avoid games that actually improved with analog? That things like Ape Escape, uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, anything pretty much because. PlayStation gamepads, not fun to use without the analog. Oh, there's a reason why we've had a standard gamepad style since the DualShock One. Does this does this uh, preclude and include itself into the point that the the DualShock was an issue back whenever they were going from the PS2 to the PS3? The licensing licensing costs they had to worry about for the actual DualShock controls, or is it just the fact that they want to be able to sell you a, an, an, an additional controller? at a later date does that mean it's got expandability if it's got expandability can they add more games to it if we can add more games to it why would you need other controllers are we going to see the two versions of the console release one with a set of games that work with analog and one that sets without the analog that that's uh, that's something that makes me curious like are they going to release the playstation classic and then are they going to release a playstation ps1 classic which is actually the the smaller wider version with uh analog controls pads built into it it, it, it gives them a lot of leeway by going with this design on the control pad in the first place. So, what, what does it what, what does it do? I don't know. Uh, back to our list of games here. So, Chrono Trigger, mentioned it before, absolutely guaranteed to be a console seller if they put Chrono Trigger on the goddamn console. And it's one of the better versions. It's uh, one with the actual animated cutscenes before and after the game. So... God damn it, yes, Chrono Trigger would be an ex exceptional choice. Especially if they're releasing it around like Christmas. I, I can imagine how many people are going to sit down and play Final Fantasy VII and go like, oh, I really wish I had another game that was like this, Chrono Trigger. <laughs> That's, that'll, be the, that'll be the next one that you should actually be playing. Um, because there wasn't any, uh, I'm looking in the Hong Kong store and they're all Biohazard games, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, uh, Resident Evil 3 are called Biohazard in Japan. Uh, I decided to go with Dino Crisis just to add to this list because it is, a sibling game to the Resident Evil series and it gives me a chance to chat about them in particular. So Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, um, 2 more so than anything else, especially with the recent uh, remaster on its way for Resident Evil 2. It's a surprise that they didn't go to Capcom and go like, hey, you might we have the old one just to put on our thing. Um, Dino Crisis, if they don't get the big license, uh, Dino Crisis would be a very good alternative. A game series that actually, I, I'm surprised, has not actually been brought back yet. Uh, the entire idea of a Resident Evil style game while running from Raptors would probably do well. Uh, another one that I actually point out, Final Fantasy VIII. Now, who, uh, uh, the big announcement in Nintendo, when people chat about the fact Final Fantasy VIII has been missing 
from uh, Square's releases and listings for the big release of uh, Final Fantasy series games on, on on all devices on the Xbox One, on the PS One, or, or the P original play, the PS Four, on the Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch, where they've said seven, nine, ten, ten, two. Thir no, not 13, uh, um, 12, and oh, 15 Pocket Edition. Now, there is some absences from that. 11 and 14, makes sense. Uh, both of them are uh, MMORPGs, or online games. It, it, odds of them coming on are not going to be high. Uh, Final Fantasy 13, all three parts of that series, have appeared on multiple consoles previously, and is a fairly recent generation game. Uh, the only reason why 15 is really in there is because that pocket edition seems to have done extremely well and got a lot of attention at its time. Uh, but no interest in me specifically. The big absence, the one missing in the middle of that big stack of stuff, is Final Fantasy VIII. Um, this would be a good opportunity to put Final Fantasy VIII on the goddamn PlayStation Classic. Uh, the game works with or without analog. You don't need it. Uh, in fact, I've been playing it on my PS uh, Vita and actually been using the D-pad more than I've actually been using the analog stick for movement. Uh, just because Generally, especially if you're running in and out of screens, it can stop you from backtracking very, very quickly. Um, so Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VIII, a uh, big, big game in the original PlayStation era. Uh, a lot of people had complaints about it at the time. I personally think it's the best, one of the best Final Fantasy games. Uh, Mechanics-wise and play-wise, I've enjoyed the hell out of it since it's actually the original release. Uh, that was the, that's my big one. My, my big Final Fantasy game is it. Uh, if you ever want to check out, feel free to jump onto the old channel. Like, probably the oldest gaming videos on this channel are me playing a modded version of Final Fantasy VIII for live streams. That's, that's the, the, the first game I, ever, I was going to play live stream on li long play was going to be Final Fantasy VIII. And I think I played as far as the LAM before uh, I gave up on it like nine years ago before coming back to do the rest of stuff here. Um, last game in my little list of 10 that I would love to see, uh, Medieval. Now, Medieval was announced as getting a remaster on, uh, I think it was, it wasn't PSX. It wasn't PSX they did it on. I think it was E3 last year. They came out and did a one more thing, like showing a shirt, wearing a medieval shirt. Quick little uh, uh, teaser trailer for medieval. That's coming back now. Medieval's on their plans. It's on their on their schedule. Like it's somewhere they're going to be going very very soon to try and get people's attention with a, a retro classic returned, a retro IP returned. Why are they not going to be putting it on the PlayStation Pl Classic? We shall only wait and see. Now, medieval is a third person action based game which I believe would improve with a analog stick. So again, it could be in one of our losses to the ergonomic design of the PlayStation Classic. Um, I've, I've got a lot of thoughts going through my head. I literally only found about this. I woke up about half an hour ago and I've actually been thinking about the PlayStation Classic since they announced it. Uh, the, their lack of clarity on what the other 15 games are, considering they're going to be launching it on the 3rd of December, that, that's that's the thing that puzzles me. 3rd of December, they want to launch it uh, for sale, but they are not going to tell us what games are actually on it at this point. It leaves me in a situation where I think there may be a, a discussion being had with different companies. Uh, with the fact that we are seeing a Namco Bandai game in Tekken 3, we're seeing a Squaresoft game on Final Fantasy VII and Wild Arms. I think both of those, both of those are Squaresoft, weren't they? Um, Jumping Flash, I have no idea who makes that. I'm pretty sure that might be a Sony first party game. And, well, Ridge Racer Type 4, which is also first party as well. No, no, that's Namco. So, right, we've got Namco and Squares. So the ones that have been announced, majority of them are third party games. This is, a, this is where the interesting thing comes from. Um, obviously, Nintendo, they, they kind of want to focus on the ones that we own and push them through. Well, the PlayStation Classic uh, support for third-party games. We can hold out hope for certain ones appearing. I, I didn't put Metal Gear Solid in that list because uh, I didn't see a family-friendly Konami game listed in there. They, that might be the big things that they'll announce. They'll, they'll actually do they'll announce packs of games from certain companies just for the fact that they, this was this was the big ones that they think everybody's probably going to have heard of. Even though Jumping Flash is probably one of the the least likely games that somebody's going to remember, but um. We'll see, we'll see how they go. Here's the big question for you. I want to know in the comments underneath, what games, what, what, if you've got to pick 20 games from the original PlayStation era, what 20 would you enjoy? What, what, what ones would hit your love buttons and make you actually kind of want to jump onto the PlayStation Classic? Uh, if you really want to do that, play classic games, 
What I can personally recommend is getting your hands on a PS Vita TV, downloading them from the PSN store, and you have a much larger selection to go from. You have a lot more than 20, and each one of them are like three bucks. So some of them are three bucks, some of them are four bucks, some of them are five. Mattering on the game, you, for, for 20 games at five, uh, you're paying $100. And you can probably get a Vita TV for about 40, uh, 40 50 quid. So if you're paying £150, you can get uh, the, uh, the same amount of games and a console that will play PSP and PS Vita games as well. The only thing you'll be lacking is two-player support. That's the big thing. If you want to actually be playing two-player, you need to find another solution or buy another. I mean, you can't even do another Vita and then play online because all those games won't have online on them anymore. Yeah, you're kind of screwed then. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, if you want to play multiplayer on some of these classic games, the PlayStation Classic is going to be your only option. But if you want to just play the games and you're much more of a fan of single-player experiences, check out the PS Vita. It'll actually allow you to go down that path and you should be able to check it out. So guys, um, thank you very much for watching. This has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I, I just want to know more about the PlayStation Classic as it comes closer to release time. I'll probably chat about it whenever we get the list of games. I've got an, I have got. want to go through that uh, list of games I actually had sitting there as retro classics on my channel. And I'll also be watching in the comments to see what games you would actually be interested in playing on the PlayStation Classic. Because if you tell me there, I might be able to actually, I might throw them in and go on a bit of a retro rampage and uh, see how many of those can we actually get our hands on through legal means on the PlayStation Network and to track them out over the next couple of months as we approach Christmas. So thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope to see you all in the next video here on Pastiche of Skin. It's, um, this, this was one of those uh, Derm Discovers kind of videos. I haven't done one of these in a long while. Hope you actually enjoyed the experience. Do remember to always support your local YouTuber by subscribing, liking their videos, following them on Twitch, subscribing on there, doing all the things. So essentially you mean is that they get paid to do the creations that they enjoy doing. It's, uh, it's the, the at least that you can do if you actually enjoy watching our videos. The, um, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that actually be mostly relevant. Uh, you, you know we have a Patreon, right? Uh, you also know that we probably uh, could do with a little bit of support on Twitch whenever we do our live streams. So uh, always remember to search for Passage of Skin. If you see me there, I'll be there. And I'll try to entertain. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.